Hey, I'm Kev Care, must have come. Welcome to race two. In clear tires and looking to get another good getaway. So we've got very short gearing, so we didn't in the end, but we can make up some positions into the first corner. As we've got another 30 minute race plus a couple of laps. And we've been a bit aggressive at the start. He's got tapped from behind there by 98. We're up to 13. Make it into the top 10, maybe. As we've made some setup changes to make the bike a bit more controllable. Made the ride height a bit bigger as well, which should hopefully help. We still have the rough surface here. But I didn't see, already up to 7, so obviously the changes I work on is opening that. The only thing we've got to be careful of is taps behind from behind like that. We've also made the gearing a bit shorter. So if the attack out of the corners should be better. You can see we're using our own line as well. But this is going well and there's opening that. Changes seem to be working well. Who knows how long they will last though. They go into the final corner. We're being very aggressive into the top five. As we go on to the second that. Now it's just the endurance of trying to keep this up for another 20 laps. As we try and make the four move four fourth with Hunter Lawrence. Oh, we get tapped from behind. I think we'll be short. I mean, shifting a lot here. Well, it feels like short shifting. Out the corners. There we go, down the inside of Lawrence, 4-4. Four, fourth. Got Covington and Garcia battling in front, we can see that. Not just seeing it on the old ticker at the bottom. You can actually see it this race. Let's go out the right hand or over the massive jump. On, down! Down, Hillman! It's annoying, we have to actually get up to top gear now to accelerate though. As I get pushed wide by Bogues. Give some of that back to the Dutchman. We love that, but we're still in eighth, despite a fault. But let's just see how long we can keep this up though. Let's go over the jumps. Got the Brit in front in seventh. That's better into the right hander. We're gonna send ourselves up for the left. And then we can accelerate as we've got the Brit and the Frenchman back then in front. But faster that so far, 39.9. They're going down the inside for sixth is Hillman. For fifth. Oh, down the inside the Brit as well. Great move. So top five right in front. That's all he gets pushed wide in the hairpin. You can see how much that just upsets the bike. That is the one thing I found really frustrating in that first race. If you didn't tell, was getting tapped from behind and being forced offline like that. So I'm going to give it back to the Brit as well. That's for pushing us offline. Actually, it was the Frenchman in front, wasn't it? We're tapping the wrong person. Never want to tap the wrong person. Found that out in life. There's also this short gearing as well. Serration out the corners as well is a bit trickier. But it seems to be really helping us around this course, which doesn't have many long straights at all. We've got Olsen and the Brit behind. That's all, he almost goes into the back of us, that's Olsen. We've got Bogers as well. Oh, come on, carry the speed, Hillman. Just got to be confident again, build up that confidence over some of these sections. But then you have riders behind, which the ghosting is so annoying. I can't tell if they're actually going to hit me or not most of the time because of the ghosting. I wish that was an option to turn off. 
Uh, so we're doing 42s, the leader's doing 39s. We've got to start speeding up. We've got Bogus and the Brit battling for ninth. Well, Hillman's trying to get involved in this battle for the top five. This all breaks way too much into the left. Forget, you don't actually break into that, Gordon. It's the right, I'm always thinking of the right afterwards. It leads into this whoop section. And you've got to be careful into that left, not to be too wide. Just forward of the hind. So the Brit and the Dutchman are doing fantastic battle and all wide into the hairpin. As I think it's the couple of Yamas, the Belgium, the French. Get out of here! Get out of here, Olsen. Trying to push us off. Seriously, our opponents are worse than Supercross, it feels like. They just want to ride the line. Don't really want to battle with you. ride their own line, but the Belgium has dropped behind his Frenchman, his colleague. And all wide into the hairpin. Get out of here, Olsen. Through it over the jump. And we land on the rear as well. And we've got a good battle here going on now. 4-4. Four, four. So we're going into the 41, so that's much better from Hillman. So out the first corner. And through the left and a bit of a straight in towards the hairpin. Oh, and Olsen just pushes us wide, see? That was directly out of Supercross. We basically lost most of our positions because of that bullshit. Unfortunately, this race. But we're almost a third of the way through it. Times flies when you're being punted. So a bit of that wide through the left and through the right. Got to be so soft on the throttle as well. There you go. You can actually do scrubs it feels like, like with confidence. That's why in previous seasons you didn't see Hillman do it a lot in say MXGP3 or even Supercross. So. Confidence in scrubbing seems to be a bit better. So there's a second line development there. So if Hillman keeps that line up, that should hopefully rot in in a few laps. Oh, massive jump into the hairpin. Hillman taking that rider right line. But again, if he keeps doing that, so if you develop that line as the race goes on. That's one thing we've got to be conscious of, developing these alternate lines as well as the race goes on. Because we're not necessarily want to race these lines that everyone else is racing. So just got to keep at it. He's got 7, 6, 5th, 4th, 8th in a line. Get a feeling the top three have just buggered off into the distance. I hear one right on the tail of Olsen. He's in revenge punt territory. Oh, and he does it into the left. One of the worst corners to be out of the groove. That's what you get, Olsen. He was very much an elbows out. Oh, form of race, and Olsen does it back. And Hillman get, does it right back again. Also, that's it, Race and Olsen dips in in the right hand as well. But Hillman holds it into the right hand up. But Olsen, they upset the house for a rider there. He seems to be much quicker. No, come on, go, go, go. Olsen seems to be much quicker, I was about to say. There's a teammate covered in his way up there. And he's down here battling with the scrubs who are trying to battle for the top 10, so... 
Uh, so we've had a further race gone. That's two falls for Hillman. But he is eighth. And he's keeping in, in touch with the top five. So despite all the changes, actually pretty similar situation to the first race, isn't it? There's all Olsen down the inside the Belgium. Oh, but the Belgium holds on into the hairpin. And there we go. Good use of the rear brake as well to pick up that bike out the corner. Get going again quickly. There's always Hillman fancies two riders in one corner. Gets by then a bit out of the groove. Watch for the Belgium, he's on the outside. He's not in the right spot you want to be. That's what that was Olsen by. And Ilman, and he's battling like a hell with Olsen. Well, so we go into sixth then, does Hillman. But you can see fifth and fourth right in front of the Frenchman. I wonder where the top three are. I really do. It's going to the right hand, again covering off Olsen. He likes a little dive, does the Norwegian rider. Definitely discovered that so far. Oh, and he's down! Oh, he's not going in under his helmet, is Hillman. He's just lighting up the whole course, I think, with his small now. It's all very wide there. No, he's down again! Come on! Get out of here, Bogus. So if you take a shot every time Hillman's falls, you're up to three. There's, oh, he pushes the Belgian right. Actually, a bit of a nut back there as well. Oh, and the Belgian wants to give some back. But it's just slowing them both down as they fall in the drift of the battle for fourth. As you can see, well, he says a second. It's a bit more than that. There's now the Dutchman and the Belgian are battling behind. The well, von Macau rider is marching on towards that top five. That would be a good result in his return. So there you go, nice little scrub. Animation is different this time around. This is 2.4 back, that's a bit more like it. But still, it's, it was built on kind of a lie of the marketing. We expected freer movement. It's just different movement. It doesn't even feel as free as Supercross as well to move it in the air. It's almost, almost three seconds back now. The Frenchman. So good job for Marlson to lie to their customers in the marketing for this Elton. Oh, that's nothing new from a game company. He's got Lyobra in eight. And oh, 140 from Hillman. He's marching in the middle part of this race. Almost at the halfway mark. And the ruts aren't too bad at the moment, but I can tell with this alternate line, it's not quite working out, is it? You can see it's still mainly that base line, which everyone has to follow. Goes a bit wide through the right. See, that's a corner where you really do not want to run wide. And so it's this. What the hell? Why is he down? Hillman, this isn't the time to lie down and rest. You're catching fifth and then you decide to sleep for some reason. What an idiot. So he's back in front of the Belgium just. Oh, and here comes Olsen, his old favourite. We've got Lyubo in front in seventh. Who's in Civ? Is that the Brit? So that's drink four. But remember, it all went to pot for Hilton. In the last couple of laps, here comes Olsen pushing him wide. The Hillman down the inside. I thought he was going to say no to Norwegian. Norwegian. 
It's all used the rear brake there to just cut off the Norwegian as well. Through the corner. Let's go through the last couple of corners into the second half of this race. That's a 44. He's lost five seconds at that, or four seconds at least. Did Hillman. But he's all over the back of Lieber. Oh, jumps in front into seventh. Oh, and gets pushed right in the hairpin again. At least that's consistent. Then makes a move back past Lieber. Punts him right. Here comes Olsen to join in the party. He heard a punt and he was like, oh, can I join in now? So go a bit more upright through that left hand. I think that's what happened. He just fell down. Even though it didn't really feel like it. Or not like it. That's, all. that's a ride line in front from Sip. What are you doing, Bogus? But well, he's holding on the Dutchman just. Maybe the track is starting to tear up a bit now. Right and starting to affect some riders. So there comes Hillman. Down the inside for Sip. And it pays off. Go over the jump. Got Hunter Lawrence in front of the Australian. He's dropped back. Remember, the Frenchman's in fourth now as well. You can see them still just in front. So despite all the falls, Hillman setting the fastest lap. 39-4. Where's he found that from? Oh, he's getting used to this MX2 now again on his return. Just around a third of the race to go. Is the Macau rider finally going to complete his assault on the top five, or is he going to fall asleep again or something? We punted ride. So again, very careful on the power. But these setup changes definitely seem to have helped. Made the bike a bit more lively out of the corners. A bit more punch. That's what we wanted, some punch in that previous race. That was a bit messy through the hairpin. But we definitely can't use this setup around a lot of these circuits, I feel. You know, one of the... It's a very short gearing. Might have to change that back as well. It feels too short. Or just change some individual gears. We've got Hunter Lawrence a second in front. Come on, Hillman. It's all a bit wide in the right. Okay, good speed over the left though, near the end of the lap. And again, fourth is right there. Drops back into the 140s after that mesmeric lap from nowhere. Oh, and he's down the inside of Lawrence for fifth. Makes the move already. Now fourth is just up the road. You can see he's learned from previous runs into that corner as well. It's slightly wider line on through the apex of that. With someone right on his tail. So he's got a Frenchman around a second in front. Let's go over this whoop section. No, Rear's gone! That's awesome, bye! Come on, Hillman, get going! That is one of the most frustrating things we've had short gearing as well. Trying to get this bike going again. Feels like we shouldn't even be visiting first or second gear in any of these corners as well. Because that's how short this gearing is. Might have helped us as well, getting, having the bike be a bit more puncher out of corners. But it's, it's just slowing us down as well, it feels like. Trying to get going again out of corners. 
But Zorns is doing a decent job of holding up Olsen. He's just waiting for Hillman to come, isn't he? The Australian. And here he comes. All over the back of Olsen the last couple corners. Trying to push in a region right, even with a 4 142. Oh, Lawrence, very slow. He's hold up Olsen. Now's him in the slot down the inside. And he's still got the Frenchman just in front. Oh, and Olsen just punts Hillman right in the hairpin. So Hunter Lawrence has missed out on the top five in it's like this race. But you never know with these two battling. Remember, Hillman down five times this race. There's out. Is there still hope yet of going into double figures? As, oh, just held on there. Tried to get on the power. Oh, and Olsen's just blocking him. Let's go over the jump. Oh, he's landed on Olsen. That's disgusting from the Norwegian. Just brake checked Hillman, did he? On his landing. So Hillman down to eighth now. After full six. But this one might have had some extraneous circumstances there from Olsen. I get a feeling they're going to be the best of pals this season, is Hillman and Olsen. As they've got Lawrence in front in sixth. Not having the good pace, Australian. He really has dropped back in the middle part of this race. Well, Hillman picked up his pace and then he's had issues. Specifically the Norwegian kind. Let's get out of here, Simon. What are you doing? Goes over the jumps. What is going on, Rear? What are you doing? There we go, that's more like it. He's right on the trail tracks of Olsen. Look at that kick in the dirt into our face. Hopefully the performance is much better as well. Had to turn down some of the particle effects. Their quality as Olsen just lit. As Hunter, should I say, just lit Hillman by. He's like, I'm not having any part of this. You go after Olsen, my son. So I had to turn down a couple of settings. So hopefully that should help the performance. But after seeing the comics about performance for this edition, don't hold much hope out. So hopefully it's translating that it's nice and smoother. This Hillman really gaining an Olsen. He sniffs the top five on his return. He does not want, of all the riders this race in the region, to grab it in front of him. Remember, the Frenchman's still not that far out in front. It's Patrio. Or Patrio. One race this season, I might say his name right. You can see that. He's just over that jump. He's only like five seconds up the road at most. So this could get very close on the final couple of laps. Let's go out the final corner. Another. Oh, that was almost a 39 from him. And one minute at 40 for that. So he's definitely pushing. He's definitely got the pace of the front runners. Just needs to be a bit consistent, Hillman. With these longer races compared to Supercross. But then Supercross has so many more races. I mean, you only have three in Europe or in the World Championship. You can have up to four, I think it is. Supercross. Um, no! Oh, how is he still upright, Hillman? I swear he just went through a pole as well. He's evolved after his time in Supercross. But he's now 2.5 back of Olsen. After, I have no idea what happened there. It seemed like he just got kicked up by a rut. A rut that wasn't near the previous lap, though. It just appeared. It's like I'm here to cause mayhem now.
Go over the jump, 2.3 behind Olsen. He was around a second back, wasn't he? For that issue. Let's go into the right. You can hear the crowd going crazy for the racing. Quite rightfully so. It's been a very entertaining race. Much more entertaining than previous race. Hillman drops into a 41 thanks to that issue. And see so good at opening jump off this opening section. Over the back of Olsen, who's catching the Frenchman as well. It's oh no! What the hell? Just went on, just leaned on the front Hillman. What is he doing into the urban? But he's still upright. He's still right on the tail of Olsen. As the battle for four could heat up here. Been saying that for a couple of laps, but I do mean it. We've still got we've got under five minutes to go. We've got four or five laps remaining of this race. It's a sprint race now, basically. But with a heavy rutted surface. So you've just got to be careful, Hillman. But so is everyone else. But he's definitely on it this lap. As he goes through this left, that inside line never really developed, but you can still take a shallow line compared to most riders, Hillman, through that. This is the second back of Olsen. With four, four, five laps to go. It's that time. Oh, almost a 1.39. Oh, Neilman into the back of Olsen. Gives him the love tap. The Olsen love tap. Olsen having none of it. There you go, into the heaven. <laughs> You've been doing that to us all race long. Hillman says, I'm giving it back to you, Olsen. Oh, what? He finally gets by, and then... Is that one of the markers by the side of the track? Just wiped him out. Did not look close to any of them. I... I have no words now. I don't understand most of the crashes in this edition, so... Probably shouldn't comment. But all that work to get into the top five, he's got to do it all over again. But the good thing is, he knows he's much faster than Olsen. Much faster than the Frenchman. He's just been like a carrot in front of him. And this whole race has that Frenchman. He's been there, swanning it in fourth. Just like, you try and catch me, Macau Rider. Former champ. I remember our battles beforehand. Beat me to the championship. And Ailman's like, I'm going to catch you. Oh no, something has just hit me. Oh, I'm sleeping. Oh, I'm falling down again. It feels like it's just not going to happen this race with the way things have gone. That's all the leaders down. Honus is down. Latvian. As we've got three laps to go. I said we on. You've got three laps to go. After this, because... Oh, it depends how the leaders took this lap. If they passed over 1 minute 40, I'd say. Look, now we can just run over them. What the hell? If they pass 1 minute 40 before the start-finish line, then we might have 4 laps to go. And I get the feeling that is the case. I don't think they've filled in seven times. And are like 10 seconds up the road. I think they have more than that. Let's go in this middle section. You've got Hunter Lawrence and Leiber battling behind for seventh. Well, for Hillman, this would be a very hard fought sixth. But of course, he wants a bit more than that. 
Let's go through the left hander. Stamina is starting to go. There is three to go at the flag then. They have crossed the line. And they are around 30 seconds in front. That was a pretty good guess. So yeah, they do have three laps to go after this one. And there is Olsen. There is the Frenchman. As oh, what are you doing in the final corner? Can you speed through it, Hillman? As he sets a 41, that should have been a 1 minute 40 without that mistake. So lap times are actually kind of consistent. If we take out the freak laps, it's around 140 with the odd 39 from Hillman. So that is definitely good pace. That's very encouraging on what's a pretty basic bike from Kazaki on his return. They said, we want you back in the World Championship, but we're not actually going to give you lots to work with. Because they didn't give you lots to work with in Supercross and he won, so... It's a bit of a different ball game, though. It's the World Championship compared to Supercross. I mean, you've got riders of incredible experience as well in here. And Supercross field are just coming off the back of a dungy. We're on them all. There's all the two laps to go. So yeah, around 30 seconds ahead. So that fit. And that's... It's around a second of that. Just over a second of that. So as expected. So we're trying to carry the speed into the final... Force, he's just not had the speed to catch back up to Olsen. It's like his fire's been dampened after being freaked, freakily taken out. Go and see Olsen's on the back of the Frenchman. There we go, 1 minute 40 again. Just backing up that point about that times and pace. And I was saying he's dropping back, he's still around 2 seconds behind the Frenchman. He's really slowing down for Olsen. So there could be a battle for fourth yet. Just as I thought, oh, it's died down a bit. Here we go, look at all three of them almost on top of each other. Ah, hold on to the rear, Hillman. That's another thing with how rutted this surface is. Got to be careful with the braking. Use a bit more of that rear brake as the race goes on as well to help get that bike round. As all the Ibers crash behind from 7th. As our Hunter Lawrence bike. And Bogues as well. As soon as on to his final lap is the Latvian. Done a superb job. No, he's down, Hillman. Go, 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 go. God damn it, just as he was making it a battle again. He's down from eighth. And again, it feels like that wasn't his fault. Like, I have no idea how to save the bike in those situations at the moment. Let's go through the final corner. It's still just a 42 despite the fall. So he only lost a couple of seconds, but... Considering it's the final lap, that's a big couple of seconds. He could have been right there with Olsen and Patrick. He could be pushing him into the barriers now in this hairpin. But instead, he's having to watch them do battle. And look at them side by side. If they actually get into some good scraps, Hillman could still catch up yet. There's Olsen less than a second in front. No, this is actually pretty similar to the previous lap. Maybe it shows how good that Hillman was on as well beforehand. No, he's definitely got the pace in this last part of the race. So you've got 1.2 back. Look at this battle for fourth. It is close here. It is not over till we cross that finish line. And Hillman on a similar pace to that previous lap. Can he actually keep it up right this time, though? 
They're showing us wins in Qatar Race 2. Let's see, here goes Hillman. A second back. Got Monticelli battling with Garcia as well. We go for the final couple of corners. Hillman into Olsen. He takes back seventh. What? As he goes for the final couple of corners. What a finish. So Honus wins ahead of Covington by five seconds. A big gap to Garcia in third. And look at that battle for fourth in the end. Just four tenths behind between the Frenchman and Hillman. And four tenths between Hillman and Olsen with that last gas move to grab a top five. Where did he find that pace in the last couple of laps? I know despite that fall he would have grabbed fourth. He could have even grabbed a podium. If he didn't have eight falls in the end, not quite double figures. So much saved your liver there. As he got Hunter Lawrence in seventh, Bogo is in eighth, Zero in ninth, Libra in tenth ahead of Van Dotnik. We've got Muse down in 12th in the end. Very disappointing for the Brit after batting for a top five early on. As you saw, Monticelli got that in 20th ahead of Rubini and in Ivanov in last. So we have got some words from the Frenchman in excite. Hunter Lawrence, they joined us where he wanted to win and went for the top neutral. Neutral from everyone. Okay, the chat will keep you in touch with other riders in your championship. You can read their comments about the Grand Prix that just took place and their provocations which you can choose whether to respond negatively, neutrally, or positively. Your sponsors will influence your reputation and therefore their rivalry towards you. Where's Olsen, God damn it? Should we go with staying on top of the podium will be very difficult though. I approve of your comment. Good race manager is important and these are victories like your owners today. I'll be neutral. In with Hunter Lawrence, we want to win for the top. I'll give you a neutral response as well, Hunter. So overall, Jonas wins with a maximum 50 out of 50. Comerton in second, Garcia third, Olsen in fourth, and Patrell in fifth, Siwa, Hunter Lawrence, Boges, Van Donnick, still at the Brit in tenth, Hillman in twelfth with a very good second race. We won't talk about the first race though, has Ivanov. Rubini and want to say have opening races to forget. The podium didn't seem to be within his grasp today. His performance wasn't really fitting with a rider of his caliber. Let's hope it won't get sponsors too late. So, credits earned. Lot with our fifth place and 900% bonus. Did not quite achieve the whole shot. Not sure we ever will. Especially as we're not doing qualifying races and qualifying in future. So be very difficult to do that we could definitely make up places on the opening app as we showed there no negative responses to free riders oh, i should have been new i should have been negative to frenchman shouldn't i as we got fifth place there good fame increase so here we can keep an eye on our rivalries as you can see frenchman positive towards us everyone else is neutral at the moment i'm surprised olsen is not happy with hillman after that as we've got lots of riders to keep tabs on, as you can see. Well, the Frenchman is happy with us. Maybe because we didn't actually catch him in the end because he kept making too many silly mistakes there. We're going to complete the challenge to finish out of these 12, so achieving that jet, make at least six scrubs in the next Grand Prix, does our sponsor. So we will be heading to Indonesia next time out. Let's look at season information, actually, so we can actually look at the calendar. Oh, it doesn't give you... It's not like before. When they give you a little sh shot of the circuit. That's annoying, but... As you can see, there's an intermediate ground in Qatar, so we needed quite a soft bike, quite a high ride height. We've got clay in Indonesia, though. Very soft. So it's slippery surface as well. So it might actually be a similar setting compared to Qatar. We might have to have kind of a high ride out. we we'll see how many jumps there are, though, and how long the straights are. We might need a longer gear ratio, but... If you got this far, thank you so much for watching. These have been fun to record, frustrating, definitely a learning experience as well. Even HGP Pro, and I hope you're enjoying them. I might try and cut down the races in future, but as you saw, we had a race long battle there for fifth, so I won't be cutting down the first two races. But let me know down below in the future if you want these races cut down. I would do that. But I hope you enjoyed.
the first round of the season, the return of Hillman to MXGP. It's definitely been up and down, very definitely eventful, especially that second race. Hopefully it can be a bit of a smoother experience in Indonesia next time out and more top five results. But thanks for watching and I will see you then.